everybody. This is Pastor Green. We welcome to our weekly Bible study. We're so elated to have you with us today. We're in uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. Uh, we'll pray and then we're going to get started. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to stand before your people once again and to share the unadulterated word of God. So we ask you right now to allow us to tap into your storehouse of wisdom and knowledge. Empower us. Illuminate us. And just give us a vision, give us the word, give us what we need in this hour. So we just thank you, we praise you, and we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. First Peter chapter 4, it begins, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from has ceased from sin. Uh, what is uh, what is Peter telling me, the children of the diaspora, at this time? He says, look, just like Jesus Christ suffered in His body, you need to strengthen your own lives, strengthen yourselves, so that you can have the same kind of thinking that Jesus had. And, and the one who who accepts this suffering in this life, you can't make that decision to accept the suffering unless you're born again. You see, if you don't want to go through nothing, God can't do nothing with you. But when you're born again, you got to be prepared to accept the same kind of suffering that Jesus uh, suffered. And, and, uh, and he had to teach this because they were, they, they thought they were going through, through uh, anguish at that time. It was going to get worse. It was not going to let up. This was the first century church, and it was not going to get better. It was going to get worse. But you got to hang in there, and that's why he had to tell them this. That's why I got to tell you this now. Some of you just getting started in your Christian walk, and you really haven't experienced much. And, and, but it's going to come a time when uh, it ain't quite so bad in America, but there are some parts of the world where if you let people know that you are a Christian, you are subject to get your head cut off. And it's just that simple. That's why this needs to be preached. That's why it needs to be taught. Because the reality is there is a great deal of hostility toward those who walk with Christ. Simple as that. Uh, verse 2. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. Uh, what he's saying is, is just strengthen yourself so that you're going to live out your life here on earth the way God wants you to live it. It's easy to go back to the old way. You know, as I was, as I was um, thinking about this early in the day when I was getting ready for, to teach tonight, uh, I remember years ago when uh, me and Daisy, we, we, you know, I was still, before I got, uh, before I rededicated my life to Christ, uh, you know, we're in the grocery store. Uh, Daisy would put a, a 12 pack of beer or a case of beer in the, in the shopping cart before she put the milk. Because we, you know, the way we got in the store, uh, the beer, you, you ran across from the direction we came in, the beer came up first before the milk. So she put the beer in before the milk. Now we're going to get the milk, but she put the beer in before the milk. And but after I stopped drinking, uh, I used to drink this non-alcoholic brew. Remember that, Daisy? I used to drink that non-alcoholic brew. And one day, um, uh, Lawrence, I had him trained to go to the refrigerator and get me a beer. <laughs> he was about one or two years old. He couldn't do. He couldn't say much. But he knew how to say, "Daddy, you want me to get you a beer?" And one day, I'm drinking these uh, old duels. And uh, Lawrence uh, uh, asked me, Daddy, you want me to go get you a beer? He saw that the first one was empty. One no, you can drink them all day. Like you might have well been drinking Kool-Aid. But they tasted like beer. And they were just weaning me off that taste. And, uh, and uh, the next time we were in Winn-Dixie, Daisy had put a 12-pack uh, a of Old Duels, or, or it might have been uh, Coors Cutter. It was a non-alcoholic beer. In the shopping cart, I say, take it out. Don't even worry about it. You don't do nothing. I just don't even bother. Don't just, we're not going to waste our money on it. Uh, you know, I, I, I was cured. 
but I still I'm thinking of I'm thinking in the past it was just a crutch so when he says you should no longer live out the rest of your days uh, with the lust of your flesh that's what I was doing I still remember the taste of beer and I wanted it and, and uh, God said no you don't need it you don't even need the taste you don't, you don't want the effect, you don't need the taste. And, and, and so we have to, to strengthen ourselves to the point where we can live it out the way God wants us to live it out. Verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walk in lasciviousness, lust, excessive wine, revelings, banqueting, and abominable idolatries. And, and, and you know, He's saying, you know, you wasted too much time when you walk in the past. Doing things, doing immoral, living an immoral life. You, you know, your whole time, you know, I, I, I like to use the uh, analogy uh, of the locust years. You, you know, uh, uh, one of the things that really liberated me when I got to Joel uh, 2 and 28, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. You know, I, I, uh, I watch people all the time, and uh, I remember my own life. It was a mess. It didn't look like a mess to my peers, but it, it was a mess. A lot of folks thought I was doing really good, but I, I was still a mess because, you know, I put that mask on, and you couldn't really tell how messed up I was because compared to other folk, I was okay. But I was nowhere near where God wanted me to be. And, and you got to... You got to to, to wean yourself off that bad stuff, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to strengthen you to, to, in those weak areas. And if you don't, you, you're never going to make any progress. Uh, I, I've seen people in church a long time and they don't make no progress because they don't apply the Word. They don't let the Word do what the Word will do. They don't sanctify themselves. They don't consecrate themselves. Or they don't deny themselves. You can't just, just because you like something, just because something is expedient, does not mean that you can do it. This, that's some things you just need to step away from. And that's what Paul, that's what uh, uh, Peter is telling the, the those uh, 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 Christians at that time in the diaspora. Y'all finna go through some stuff. So you need to get yourself ready for, uh, for increased hardship. And if you still got these weak areas, you're going to crumble under the pressure. Uh, you can't be doing the, the, the immoral lifestyle. You can't be dabbling in the past. You, you know, uh, um, you, you just can't do it. Look at verse 4. He says, Wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them in the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Your old friends, they're talking about you. You know, when you get saved and you start, you really start walking and living for the Lord, there is a, a, a profound difference in what people see. And, and when you're doing it right, they'll really see it. Now, you're not putting on no front. You're just living out the Christian life the way it should be done. And um, the people who knew you in the past, they know they knew the old you, they're going to notice it. And um, some don't feel certain ways about you. They may talk about you. Uh, they may even doubt the the sincerity of your faith. They may doubt it. They talk about you behind your back. Uh, I, I remember one time um, uh, we were still at St. John. This might have been 30 years ago. And this lady was talking about me behind my back. Because she didn't really know me. But Daisy was sitting right there. And she didn't know that Daisy was my wife. But she didn't know me. She just said some things that were very derogatory because she didn't know me. She didn't know that I was actually sincere. You know, uh, when we started, when I first, when I got into, involved in the church, I got involved in a lot of activity until I found what I liked. What I really liked doing was outreach ministry, but I, I tried a lot of the other uh, ministries. I mean, I knew I couldn't sing, so ain't no need joining the choir. Okay, uh, um, I always had the gift of teaching, but uh, I didn't realize that God had that there is a special gift of teaching. I found that out. But I'm just saying, I'm just a, I'm just a babe in love with the Word, in love with Jesus, and, and I want whatever you got. 
So I tried a whole lot of stuff. And so she probably saw me uh, get volunteer for this and doing that. And because uh, she's sitting on her butt, uh, she had some bad things to say. And it, after a while, after a few months, she got involved with the outreach ministry, the same lady, and realized that her opinion of me was absolutely wrong. But when she was talking about me, you know, I ain't never said nothing to her about that. But she was one that got involved with the outreach ministry and, um, uh, you know, and hopefully it did something for her. Just like it did something for me. And, and, but the idea here, people are going to think it's strange that you don't no longer want to do the crazy stuff. You understand me? They will think it's strange. They think something's strange. They, they, they think something came over you. And they're going to talk about you. People who knew you, they, they, everybody knew Goat. But the, like I tell them, Goat is dead. Goat got nailed to a cross. Never to be heard from again. I don't get offended when they call me Goat because um, that's some of them, that's some folk, that's all they ever knew. Uh, you know, it depends on where somebody, when someone knew me, would de determine what nickname get used. Folk who knew me back in the 60s, before I became goat, they just called me Billy. Folk, folk who uh, uh, I knew it from the 70s on, that's when goat came along, and goat had to, goat got nailed to a cross. But there's some folk who knew me back then that know me now, they'll, they'll use that, and I don't, you know, I used to just correct them, but I don't even worry about it now. But only a handful of folk will, uh, it, it's a term of endearment. I don't hold it personal. But they know me. They know that I'm a real deal. Verse 5. Who shall give account of him that is ready to judge? Let me, go, let me put 4 and 5 together. For then they think it strange that you run not with them in the, to the same excess of riot speaking evil of you. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? Uh, uh, for this cause was the gospel preached to them that are dead that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. You, you know, um, everybody's going to have to face God and explain what they did, and explain who they were, explain what they were doing, explain what you were thinking. Everybody's going to stand before the judgment. I don't know how many times I don't preach this. Uh, it gets preached all the time. Uh, uh, every responsible preacher at some point is going to preach this. You got to preach the judgment. Uh, you you got uh, uh, as I was explaining to uh, the lawyer a little earlier today, in, in the the Great Commission was more than just going into the world and make disciples. Uh, the uh, 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 he said, go into the world and, and, and preach the gospel. Uh, 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 go into the world and make disciples. That was Matthew. Go, go into the world and preach the gospel. That was uh, Mark. Uh, uh, repentance and remission of sin should be preached. And go feed my sheep. That's what Jesus was talking to Peter. This is the same conversation. So you got to, first of all, you got to preach. How should they preach except they be sent? So God sends us out. God gets us ready. He sends us out. Uh, I'm preaching. I'm teaching. I'm trying to get others ready so that when it's time come, God can send you out. Uh, in, in your sphere of influences, God can be able to use you to share a word with somebody that might change somebody's life. That's why we do this. That's why me and the countless other men and women, uh, preachers and apostles and pastors and teachers and evangelists, that's why we do it. Because we know that Jesus Christ is coming back again and he's going to come back the next time as a judge. And if we can help somebody avoid the judgment, then so be it. And, and, but like Jesus said, not everybody going to get saved. And you can't hold it personal. I can't reach everybody. But the ones that will listen to me, listen to what I'm talking about. And if you don't want to listen to me, listen to somebody else, but you need to hear it. Everyone stands before the judgment. You're going to give an account. He's going to, he's going to, Peter said, he's going to judge the quick and the dead. That means those that are already dead, and when he comes back, those that are alive and remain, they're going to be judged also. Everybody. Nobody escapes. 
For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. You know, um, some people got preached before they died. And they, and they were criticized by others on earth. Folk might have talked about you. But when you died, you went to heaven. They can talk about you now, but when you die, you're going to heaven. If you receive the gospel, if you receive Jesus Christ. That's the good news. That's what the good news is all about. Uh, it was God's plan that we hear the good news. This was God's plan. And, 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 and through the Spirit, we have a new life. You can't live a new life without the Spirit. The Spirit does not... When the Spirit dwells in you, it gives you the it enables you to live out the Christian life the way it's supposed to be done. The old me still like getting drunk. I ain't seen him in a long time. But if I let him come out, I'm sure he get he could develop another taste for alcohol. He could develop another taste for beer. Now occasionally I'll, I'll have me a glass of wine. I got some wine in, in the house right now. And then when an occasion come in, David will pop a cork. But I don't do it outside the house. Uh, 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 he, the scripture says he, he gave wine to make the heart merry. And oil to make your face shine. Uh, see, so uh, 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 there, there are occasions when wine is a is a is is the thing to use. He told uh, uh, Paul told Timothy, drink a little bit for your stomach's sake. So, you know, the I think the Catholic priests may go as well, a lot of alcoholic Catholic priests, because they go to excess. You, you should not do anything in excess, but you don't want to do anything that's going to be a stumbling block to others. That's why folk outside my household will never see me with a glass of wine. You know, we go out to, to a restaurant, um, I'm going to order tea. But for one thing, I got to drive. So. But the, the Bible does not prohibit it. It does prohibit being drinking uh, 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 alcohol in excess. And if you've ever had a problem with it a little bit in the past, it's your best bet is don't mess with it now. Something you just don't want to mess with, regardless of how long you've been delivered from it. In verse, verse 8, And above all these things have verbal charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover a multitude of sins. Uh, actually, it's a, but you could, could uh, um, use the word love here. Love will cover a multitude of sins. The most important thing we can do is love each other. You gonna look, how does God know that? How will people know that you are a Christian by your ability to love other people, especially those that are saved? Verse ten. So as every man hath received the gift. Even so, minister the same one to another as good servants of the manifold grace of God. Uh, uh, God has shown his grace in many different ways, and uh, he gives uh, uh, all the spiritual gifts are in the church. Everybody got something. Everybody has a gift. Uh, uh, some may have the gift of serving. Some may have the gift of singing. Some may have the uh, ministry gifts. Some you might be able to lay hands on folk and, and they... And, and heal the sick. Uh, there are some. Uh, there, there are uh, um, uh, in, in uh, uh, Ephesians and First Corinthians chapter twelve. He lists the spiritual gifts. There are a, a, a list of uh, administrative gifts. Ephesians four. He gave some apostles, some pastors, some uh, evangelists, and uh, uh, pastors and, and teachers. And and the, and then the, the other grace gifts, uh, uh, the, the uh, discernment, long suffering, service, administration, gifts of giving. Some people, uh, God has endowed you with the ability to make money because you can keep the church funded. Because God bless you to be a blessing. He can't bless everybody like that. Because some folks, they, uh, you know, they make money, they, they, they're going to blow it all at the track. They're they going to blow it all on uh, uh, um, a betting on sports. 
They're going to blow it all up in, with drugs and alcohol. So, but God has anointed some people with the gift of giving because he wants some money. He wants to help somebody in the earth. So he put money in your hand because he knows that you're going to see that need and you're going to need it out of your own pocket. And, and, and as God bless you, and you do what God say do with the money, he keep blessing you because he knows he can trust you. So every man has received a gift. Look at verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak. And he's talking about someone with the gift of speaking here. If, oh my goodness. If any man, don't worry about it now, we do it later. If any man minister, let him do it as, his, as, as of the ability which God giveth. That God give all things may be, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Uh, the gift that God gives you, use it to his glory. Now, verse 12, this is the verse that um, my youngest daughter, Angelia, used with her first sermon 13 years ago. And I actually saw that sermon on YouTube. It's still there. Actually, I pulled it up and I, I reposted it today. When, as I was studying for this, I reposted that. And it reads, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. This is the scripture that Angelina used in her very first sermon when she was 19 years old. That was 13 years ago. And, and, and uh, this is how she explained it. She, you know, she, in a simple way, uh, she just used the, some of her classmates how they reacted to her after she got saved and started preaching. They started acting crazy. They started they started treating her differently because of that uh, she was no longer and then you talk about wow boy that child was something else. Thank God he come and saved her. Came and rescued out of her madness. Uh, you know and, uh, uh, one of the girls uh, when uh, Angelia the way she was preaching one of the girls had went crazy doing this and another one went crazy doing that and, and um, uh, Angelia say well I went crazy for Jesus y'all just went crazy uh, you know I thought it was kind of funny but see, people react to you differently they think it's strange that you no longer want to get drunk they think it's strange that you no longer want to get high they think it's strange that you no longer want to sleep around. They think it's strange that you no longer want to sell drugs. They think it's strange that you no longer want to rob people. They think it's strange that you no, no longer want to uh, steal out of out the stove. Uh, they think it's strange that you would make those drastic changes. But you would appear to be fun to them. But that was just lasciviousness. That was appealing to your flesh. They think it's strange that you want to make these changes. But when God has got his hand on you, he will transform you on the inside out. And, and ultimately, uh, a, a, the new man comes out, and that's all they see. Now, they might not remember nothing but the old man, but all they see is the new man, and they can't handle it. They can't handle it. And, and he said, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Let him talk about you now. But like I said, we all going to stand before the judgment, and there are going to be some rewards for you in heaven. But guess what? I'm here to tell you about it right now. You do God's business right now. God, he'll take care of your business right now. I'm here to tell you. You serve God right now. You put up with what we got to put up with right now. God going to bless you right now. In spite of everything. But you got to deal with it. You got to deal with that. Uh, you got to deal with persecution. You got to deal with folks talking about you. As my old pastor uh, Bishop used to say, uh, uh, you, you need to have some long sleeves on. Uh, don't, let them, don't let it bother you. They're going to talk about you. They talked about Jesus. That didn't stop him. They talked about Paul. That didn't stop him. They talked about Peter. That didn't stop him. Well, they don't talk about you. 
God gives you a chance, you do it. If people think you crazy for doing it, then let them talk. Verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the Spirit of God, the glory and of God, rested upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Go on, look at him. Talk about me all you want to. I want you to talk about me, uh, but I'm going to keep serving Jesus. I, I ain't got a problem with you falling out with me. I'm not turning back. I ain't going to any normal life on the street. Uh, you know, when I first uh, 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 stopped drinking, I tell you what happened. Daisy, she'll, 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 take, she'll, she'll tell you this. This is true. I ain't got to make nothing up. I actually had two six packs of beer in my refrigerator. It might have been you two 12 packs. And uh, when the Lord convicted me, I said, Look, uh, 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 I, I popped two, took them out of the refrigerator. I took both 12 packs out of the refrigerator. And I started, I popped them, pulled them down the drain. We were still living on Hotley Place. And I, I, the first two, I pulled them out the drain, pulled them down the drain. And then I, I took the third one out, I spent a pop that way and pulled it down the drain. And the Holy Spirit said, you know, do that, just take it out, put it in the cabinet. It's going to serve a purpose for you. So, because see, because what used to happen, all my buddies, they knew that I never ran out of beer. You, you want your cold beer just happened to accidentally stop by my house. And, you know, it was a handful of them, they do that. They knew they wanted them a cold one, just show up at Willie's house. He got some. He never ran out. He's generous with it. So they, they knew they stopped by my house, they can get a cold one. Probably two. Hang around long enough, you can get three. So when they knew it was going to be like that, they show up. There wasn't a whole bunch of folk, but it was a handful. A handful of my close acquaintances. When they came by and when they, and they wasn't no beer in the refrigerator, it's in the cabinet, I ain't drinking no more, but you're welcome to one, you're welcome to two. So they're getting cold, they're getting where they used to could get cold beer, you can have it, but it's hot. Ain't, when that's gone, they ain't buying no more. The, the, that's the last beer that's going to get bought with my money, with money that God gave me. And guess what? When the last beer was drunk, nobody else came to the house. It's like they knew it was gone. The one that got out. See, God used that. Now, if I just pulled it out, wouldn't they'd have kept coming because they think, oh, they just missed it. Oh, they came by and it wasn't none. And, but, you know, you come by tomorrow, he probably have some. No, when they knew that, then you got that, that warm beer out the cabinet, not out the refrigerator, uh, they, they knew it would, there would be no more. So God used that and to let them know there ain't no more. There will be no more. We talking 30 years ago. I don't know when the last time I was 30 years ago. The last time I had a beer. I've had wine recently, but I haven't had a night. You know, you have to know how, how I like me some of my Budweiser's that understand uh, old Milwaukee. <laughs> that understand this. You ain't know what old Milwaukee is. He's looking at me crazy. You know, and they talked about me at first. I heard about them. See, some folk done, you know, whispered them all. He'll get back to you. Look at verse uh, 15. He says, But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busy, a busybody in other men's matters. See, you might suffer, but let it be. Let it go. As long as it ain't for none of that bad, evil stuff. I don't mind being lied on about what you think I might have done because I'm ready to stand before the judgment. Can you? See, verse 16. Yet if you, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on, on his behalf. You see, when you are a Christ follower, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Jesus said if you Confess me before me, and I will confess you before all eternity. Don't deny Jesus. You get the opportunity to, to, to declare that Jesus Christ is your Lord. Take that chance. 
let it be known and let the chips fall where they may. If folk don't want to deal with you no more, then so be it. Now, I ain't say go around beating folk across the head with your Bible. Uh -uh. If, if, if they watch you enough, somebody's going to come up to you and say, well, what must I do to be saved? And then you get to share Jesus Christ and the plan of salvation. That's, that should be your plan in life. It's to get in a position where someone feels comfortable enough, they're convicted, they know that their own life is a mess, and they are they are have enough confidence in you because they have seen you under pressure, upholding the bloodstained banner, and they feel comfortable enough with you, and they can come and you can actually minister to them. That's what you want as a Christian. That's what you especially want as a young Christian. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if at first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? My goodness. That if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Remember, Jesus said not everybody is going to be saved. Not everybody who hears the gospel is going to say, Jesus Christ, uh, I, I need you to, to forgive me of my sin and uh, to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Not everybody is going to make that declaration. Some people are going to, they feel so comfortable in their sin. They think they got time. They don't make a decision. They, they, they like living the way they live. They like being broke all the time. They like being high all the time. They like feeling good all the time. They, 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 they have never experienced what it truly feels to be delivered from all that stuff that can that, that really keeps you separated from God and, 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 and allow and prevents you from being used by God. You never experienced the abundant life. You, you, you're eating the crumbs instead of getting the, the real deal, the real meal. Oh, you might think you got it going on, but if you, you commit your ways to the Lord, He'll show you some stuff that you had that your eye have not seen or ear heard. The things that the Lord has in store for them that love Him. You can't even imagine what God will do with you and through you if you allow Him to. In verse 19, we'll end right here. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their soul to Him in well doing as unto a faithful creator. Look, God ain't going to start what he can't finish. He who has began a good work will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. You can count on it. But you got to put the work in. you got to allow the Holy Spirit to make that transformation. How do you do that? You need to get the word in you. You need to pray regularly. Uh, I just uh, you, you need to fast. You don't need to make a big deal out of it when you fast, but you need to do it. What fasting does, it gives you, uh, it allows you to know that that God will sustain your inner man by when you starve your natural man. Sometimes you need not just fast from food; you may need to fast from uh, uh, TV, uh, uh, fast from the internet. If you spend more time watching, um, uh, uh, I'm talking, what's the name of that TV show? Um, Manifest. <laughs> if you spend all your time watching Manifest instead of studying Scripture, I'm messing with somebody now. If you spend all your time trying to play basketball instead of uh, uh, studying the Word of God, I'm messing with somebody else now. God knows what he's doing. You let him do, if you let him have it, let him have his way with you, he will bring glory to you. He'll make he'll open doors for you that no man can shut. He'll put you in places that you can't imagine. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to share this word. We, we thank you for this great book. Uh, that same Peter who was, who was a, an ignorant fisherman, who was impetuous and impulsive and 
and, 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 and quite frankly, he was a moral coward until the Holy Spirit got him. So we just thank you for him. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the opportunity to let your light shine in us, that we can reflect your glory in the world. Empower us right now to deal with whatever may come. To give us the, the, uh, the strength and will to endure whatever hardship may come our way because we refuse to yield under the pressure of the world to conform to the world's standards. So we just thank you right now. We receive right now all the blessings that you have for us. Bind the work of the enemy in it that will and has come against us. And, and loose a, a, a spirit of, of resolve within us, Lord, that we can carry out the work and bring glory and honor to your name. And we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Uh, we are next time. We are First Peter chapter 5. And uh, we'll finish up and uh, we'll go into Second Peter after that. But this has been a great book, a very uh, instructional, very practical, uh, but very doctrinal. So um, uh, you, you put you some more time in this book. If anybody is uh, interested, I'll uh, get my uh, the notes. You're always welcome to the notes. So uh, just send me an email or send me a Facebook messenger with your email address and I'll download you the notes. Um, next Sunday, the 20th, um, we're still in the Gospel of St. Luke. And on the 27th, fourth Sunday, Prophet is Daisy Green, the apple of my eye is going to bring the word. I want y'all, y'all have to pay no attention to me on the 20th, but I want you tuned in on the 27th and let somebody know I'm going to post it on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, Daisy will be bringing the word on the 27th, fourth Sunday. Um, we will, uh, if, you, if, you, if you've been blessed by the ministry and you want to give, you may do so. Uh, one of these days, God is going to, uh, very soon, I believe, he's going to uh, give us some more permanent uh, building to operate in that we can do even a greater work and I, I look for that to happen but in the meantime you're sowing into good seed so if you want to give to the ministry you may do so using the cash app or Zelle so uh, dollar sign green WL is the uh, cash app and uh, Zelle uh, 689-246-5892 okay we we'll see y'all next time, next uh, Wednesday night at 7.25 and uh, Sunday morning at 10.15. Y'all be blessed.